Hey guys, in this video I'm gonna compare two no-code tools side by side. We're gonna take a look at Webflow versus WordPress. Which one is the best? At the end of the video, you're gonna find out why I pick one tool against the other and what are the reasons and criteria that I use to judge and decide to use this specific no-code tool. Before we jump into the content, let me quickly introduce myself. Hi, my name is Caio Calderari, I'm a no-code expert and also a senior product designer. If you're new here on the channel, consider subscribing for more content on no-code tools, design, startups and much more. And if you like this video, and you think it's useful, don't forget to leave the thumbs up on the video. All right, now let's compare Webflow and WordPress side by side. Both WordPress and Webflow can be used to build landing pages, to build websites and also other types of projects as well. You can build membership sites, online communities, you can build dashboards, you can customize these tools to build a wide variety of projects using no code, all that in a visual way using drag and drop builders that will allow you to do everything you want to do without writing code yourself. So you don't have to become a developer to use these tools. But there is a very clear difference between WordPress and Webflow. WordPress started way before Webflow. It started in 2003 and it started as a open source platform. And then the core idea was at the time to build blogs using WordPress. After a couple of years, WordPress evolved and it became not only a blog tool, but way more than that. Nowadays, you can build websites, landing pages, and also custom types of projects using plugins and also customizing the code itself. Now, the difference is that Webflow started in 2013 as a closed source platform, meaning you don't have access to the core of the platform and there is a team taking care of the development of this platform. Also, Webflow started with the purpose of being a web development tool, a no-code tool, a visual builder for building websites and landing pages. And it also evolved to something a little bit more powerful nowadays with plugins. And it's also possible to build more complex types of projects with Webflow. So the bottom line is Webflow was born to be what it is today and it's constantly evolving and WordPress kind of entered this space by accident. So these little things make a huge difference because Webflow was born to be a website builder. While WordPress started as a blog tool and then evolved. One is open source and the other one is closed source. And that plays a huge difference in how these tools work. A fun fact is that some people say and compare Webflow as being Apple and WordPress as being Android. All right, so I created this table of comparison here to put Webflow side by side with WordPress and I have a couple items here that I'm gonna use as criteria so we can see how these tools compare against each other. Okay, so let's start off by the first criteria here, which is ease of use. So in my opinion, WordPress is easy to use, yes. Um, you can quickly understand how it works. There are a lot of options available for you to build faster. There are some drag and drop builders like Elementor and others. So yeah, it's easy to use, but sometimes not as easy as Webflow. So for this first criteria here, I think Webflow is better in terms of experience, in terms of interface. It's very easy to use and understand. Everything works well. It's very responsive. So once you click something, it really works well. And there is a team behind all that and making sure that the user interface is good and sometimes with WordPress, my opinion and experience is that it could be better, right? So in that regard, I think Webflow shines the most and takes the lead here. So for this first item here, I really think Webflow takes the lead. It's amazing, it's easy to use. Depends on your background, of course, how easy it will be for you to get started. But once you understand the basics, it will be very easy to use on a daily basis and in the long term as well. And the experiences will be 
better. You will have less frustration. Just for you to have an understanding, and I want to give my personal and professional experience here. I stopped using WordPress in 2014 when I discovered Webflow, and since then, I stopped using WordPress. So that's uh, just to give you a little bit of a perspective on my personal opinion. Of course, you can have a different opinion as well, but I think Webflow has an amazing experience and it really delivers a lot in terms of ease of use. Now let's go for the next criteria here, which is very related to the first one. It's uh, about learning curve. And again, in this regard, I think Webflow is better as well. The learning curve is smaller. Of course, this depends on how technical you already are in terms of how much you know about web development, HTML, CSS, some basic concepts about web development. So if you know a little bit of it, it will be easier for you to jump into Webflow. To me, it was easier to learn Webflow than learning WordPress. It has an amazing user experience and that's related to your learning curve and the process of actually getting familiar with the tool. Uh, I'm not saying that WordPress is not easy to learn. It is also easy, but I think Webflow is better in that regard. So depending on how much uh, technical knowledge you already have, if you know a little bit about web development, HTML and CSS, I think Webflow will be very, very um, easy to understand because it also uses the same concepts that you would be familiar with if you come from a web development um, space. If you're not technical, then I think any tool will be a little bit more difficult for you to learn, but it's not impossible. And I think because of the user experience and because it's a easier tool to uh, just jumping and create a project, it will be faster for you to learn. For instance, just to start with WordPress, you would have to know how to install it. Maybe if you are using it from the official website, it's going to be one story. If you want to build your own project using a custom hosting service, then it's another completely different story. Then you would have to do a lot of setup just to have your project ready for you to use and then install a bunch of plugins and then deal with a lot of complexity just to get inside the builder itself. So yeah, it's a little bit more complicated. It's possible to learn, but I think in that regard, in my own personal opinion, Webflow is better in that aspect as well. All right, the next criteria is customization and design. And again, Webflow wins in that aspect. WordPress is also very flexible and customizable, but the problem is depending on what you want to build and customize, it can become a headache, okay? In terms of customization, I think Webflow has all the features you need to customize your project and have a pixel perfect design. And I think the design community as well, professional designers are using Webflow the most and that's why we have a lot of amazing projects and amazing design projects built with Webflow. We also can see something similar with WordPress, but I think WordPress is losing the game year by year. Um, there are a lot of templates out there as well, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, WordPress has a huge community, has a ton of templates available, but I feel that in terms of design, Webflow is the tool to go to, especially if you are a designer yourself. I think the projects are well done and very polished and pixel perfect. And so I think um, the taste of who's using Webflow is different from who is using WordPress. And I think more and more professional designers are choosing Webflow against WordPress. So. I think in terms of customization, in terms of design, yes, Webflow is winning in that aspect. And WordPress is not that far. We can see amazing projects built with WordPress as well, by designers as well, for designers. Uh, but I think there is a slight difference. So it would be a tie, but I would say nowadays Webflow is shining 
um, a little bit more in that aspect as well. Again, this is just my personal opinion, but I think a lot of people will agree with me on that one as well. All right, moving into the next topic, which is security. Again, Webflow is the winner, and I'm gonna explain why. WordPress is open source and Webflow is closed source, and that plays a huge difference in how secure these tools are. The WordPress source code is out there, available to everyone. So there is a history of people building plugins, phishing, um, scams, and also bots that will spam your WordPress website. And because a lot of websites are built with WordPress, a lot of people try to break into the website, admin panel, they install malicious software so yeah so expect a few problems in that aspect and people breaking into your website um, finding your user password installing uh, plugins that you don't see uh, tweaking the source code so i've seen a lot of shady things happening in the wordpress environment i even had my own websites hacked a few times so this means um, you have to be super cautious, use a very good hosting service, make sure you are consistently checking your website. So it could become a headache for you. So in the Webflow environment, I think these things are not going to be a problem for you because the Webflow team is taking care of the security for you, the hosting, the structure, the environment. And then all you have to do is to think about building your project. And that's a peace of mind that I prefer to have. That's one of the reasons why I migrated from WordPress to Webflow. The next criteria is community. And in that aspect, I think both communities are very good. WordPress has a lot of people using it, a very big community. I would say it's even bigger than Webflow, but the Webflow community is also amazing and it has amazing professionals using it. So they are building plugins, they are building templates, they are sharing knowledge, they are creating videos like I'm doing here uh, on YouTube. They are also building tutorials, courses, clonables that you can use to speed up your process, building plugins and a lot of other things to make sure to make sure that you can build amazing things with Webflow. So in both cases, I think if you search information on the web, you're going to find articles, you are going to find people building with it, agencies, developers. So in that regard, I think it's a tie. But I also prefer the Webflow community because I'm a part of it. So because I'm no longer using WordPress, of course, I focus more on the Webflow community. And I think it's amazing. All right, the next criteria is plugins. And I think again here we have a tie because yeah, WordPress has a lot of plugins available. But the main difference here that I would mention is Webflow has plugins and has a lot of companies building uh, extra tools that you can plug into Webflow. And I think the main difference here again is the open source thing against the closed source thing because WordPress has a bunch of free plugins as well. And it has so many plugins that sometimes it's even hard to pick which one you're gonna use. And the problem is you're gonna pick a lot of plugins and then add so many plugins to your website that it will probably be a problem. Sometimes plugins can conflict with each other. Sometimes they can make your whole website slower. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of amazing plugins out there. I won't deny some for SEO as well. There are very good, but the other problem is sometimes you actually need to install a bunch of plugins for security, for SEO, for other purposes as well, just to get started with WordPress. And that means maintaining these plugins, also sometimes paying for um, some specific plugins that are must have plugins. So I think for Webflow, the plugins are better and made by companies for Webflow specifically. So they are um, going through a lot of reviews and they have to be approved to actually be available inside the plugins marketplace. So I think because Webflow is a company building their own platform, they have much more care uh, of what is possible to do and the plugins and the integrations, the relationships uh, between the companies and Webflow. So I think it's a little bit more curated and that plays a huge part into the quality of the plugins and into the quality of the platform as a whole as well. So I think that would be the main difference, but 
At the same time, of course, WordPress provides a lot of great plugins as well. But since again, I'm using Webflow, I think it's better. Uh, but in this uh, specific scenario here for the comparison, I'm gonna put those uh, two tools side by side and give the trophy for both tools as well. All right, let's go for the final criteria, which is pricing. And I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for this moment because of course you wanna know which one is cheaper. So for this criteria, we have a tie again because it's very hard to predict how much it will cost for your specific project needs. It depends on the size of your company, the size of your website uh, or type of project you're building. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about this and why I think it's a tie. WordPress can seem to be a little cheaper in some cases, and that's true. It depends really on the type of hosting setup you will have and the type of company you choose to host your website. So at first, WordPress can be a little cheaper and you can run a WordPress site um, for less than running a simple Webflow website. But in the long run, as your project grows and scales, I think then the competition becomes a little bit more close. Uh, so Webflow might make sense for you and also the resources you're going to have with the uh, smaller plans and the cheaper plans with uh, Webflow are going to be good for you to continue running your website for a long time. So it's a rough comparison, but I think it pays off to use Webflow and even comparing with simple websites to pay a little extra because of all the other benefits you're gonna get. The thing is, for all the security you get, the plugins, the community, the templates, the user experience, all that, if you consider that you're paying a very similar price or sometimes even less, sometimes a little more depending on your specific project needs, because you know the drill, sometimes what seems to be cheaper is actually cheaper for a reason, right? So sometimes it's better to pay a little bit extra and get extra benefits as well and have something a little bit more reliable than saving a couple bucks, but then having problems later on or that little thing becoming a headache. And then you would have to spend time, which is also money. And then in the long run, after you do the calculations, peace of mind, ease of usage, um, and a lot of other aspects would pay off and then it becomes cheaper than the other option that was just a couple bucks less. And in some cases it could become more over time and then you would have to migrate. And in fact, I've seen a lot of people migrating from WordPress to Webflow, a lot of freelancers becoming Webflow experts and becoming only Webflow developers, agencies also migrating from WordPress to Webflow. I myself did that transition at the agency that I worked for. We were only building projects with WordPress and after I discovered Webflow, I never used WordPress again. And I don't plan to go back to WordPress anytime soon since I have found myself into Webflow and I'm really happy with what Webflow can deliver. So, which one is the winner at the end? Well, in my humble opinion, in my professional and personal opinion, Webflow takes the lead here and is the winner. And I really recommend you use Webflow and give it a try. So if you wanna get started and create your first Webflow account, your first Webflow project, you can even start that right now and for free. You can access the website, the links down below, go here, click the link and build your first Webflow project. Start playing with the tool and you're gonna see that the comparison that I did here is accurate. And I hope you really can build amazing projects with Webflow. And if you do end up building a project with Webflow, let me know in the comments down below and I will be really happy to know that you are going to use Webflow from now on. I hope you enjoyed this comparison. I hope I could help you clarify some of the questions you had. And if you have other questions, please comment here down below. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing for more videos like this. And if you liked this particular one, click the like button down below. I see you on the next one. Bye bye.